What's going on guys? Welcome back to the shop for today's project. I'm going to be digging into this here cherry burl and hanging on to this guy for a while. As you can see, it's kind of like a, a growth out of a small-ish kind of branch. Comes over here, doubles in size. I'm not sure if this is a branch or a stem as this was gifted to the shop. So we're going to get this prepped up. And get it up on the lathe. See if we can't make something cool out of it. Eh? Alright, now we're going to be using our... Duke of Heritage alignment tool to center up our faceplate here. Um, I do realize this is a big, big blank, but I'm gonna leave myself mm, the maximum amount of material so that as we explore this guy, we have a little more wiggle room for decision-making as far as how we wanna present the piece. I'm using stainless screws. They're a little more malleable, so less likely to break off in the piece but we should be good and centered now Right, guys let's pull you in here see what we got going on um originally uh, i was thinking we could just turn this straight through maybe leave a couple of little voids and stuff that's why i started to develop out this tenon but not only does that tenon look super sketchy um this particular void this guy here i don't know if you can see them see if i can put a light in there it goes way deeper than I had anticipated so I'm thinking we might have to cast this I think that's probably the safest way to go it will keep this piece a usable piece like if this wasn't so long once this is turned uh, to a thinner wall this is just gonna be kind of hanging in the breeze so I really love the way these voids kind of come across, I think that's a really cool look. But in order to keep this together, I think we're going to have to do a resin pour. Um, we'll do something relatively transparent uh, just to keep this thing together. But yeah, I think that's our best move going forward. So I'm also probably going to lose about an inch and a half of this. Um, we'll make that determination when we get this molded up and see where the resin ends. Um, but yeah, so far so good. Guys, you can see where I marked out for the height of where the mold's gonna go. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to cut this back slightly so that when we do have this molded up, I have something of a channel to get the resin poured in. Um, I just want to make sure we don't end up with voids down in here. Got to make sure it all flows down and in, which could be a tedious process. But I'm going to go ahead and try and get some of this cleaned up. guys we're going to be using the let's resin deep pour epoxy and i'm going to add just a touch of this i don't know it's like a brown metallic almost looks like uh kind of like a dark copper color Some went down the sides of the bowl, it looks like. I don't think this bowl's coming back. Oh. Uh. Broke it. Well, it looks like it filled our voids pretty well. And that's what I was worried about most.
All right, guys, bringing you into what we're working with here. Um, just roughing out the bottom here. I found a couple of voids, which I was kind of expecting. Um, honestly, I thought they were going to be bigger since we were trying to force the resin up from the bottom of the piece. So that's going to kind of set our depth in that I at least want to get past those. So we have a bunch of extra width down here. So we got, I don't know, probably like an inch of width in this band. So we're going to radius this out and then we will pick up from there. I want to leave enough width in the wall of the bowl so that there's actually something to look at uh, inside these little resin windows. So we're going to get on with that. We'll get the outside of this kind of finished up, at least for shaping. And then that will allow us to continue on on the inside and get it into a finished thickness. Feeling pretty good about that. I think we're gonna sand it out the rest of the way. All right, so as you can see here, I've gone through and just added some thin CA to all of the bark inclusion areas, just so that when we sand this out, all that bark doesn't disappear. You just got to stabilize it, make it a little harder, and then that way it doesn't dust out and leave voids as we sand it through. Alright guys, we're getting ready to turn this tendon off. I'm just using my vacuum chuck as a jam chuck for the moment. We'll probably fire up the vacuum to get the uh, the bottom of it here finished. But just so you know what that tingling is, it's my vacuum tube hanging through the back.
it is done let's go check it out now you guys know well, most of you guys know um done a lot of work with a lot of different burls i'm um, always hunting after the interesting wood distressed stuff spalted stuff you know the atypical but this piece is something i've never quite seen before the entire bottom of this thing is just covered with the tiniest little burl eyes all throughout never quite seen anything like it i'm always uh amazed by the things that we can find uh, in these pieces um but yeah, I'll leave you guys some slow rollers at the end, but uh, there's just so much cool stuff to see in this. Um, I love the windows. Oh, I love those burl cracks, the way they all line up. Really cool, really cool effect. I'm really liking this piece. And if you guys happen to like this piece as well, please smash that like button. If you are new to the channel, please think about sticking around, maybe hitting that subscribe button. Um, plenty more to come. Um, have another piece uh, in the works so we'll have another one uh, coming out here shortly um, I do want to mention um, the Brad's workbench uh, sanding paste and tongue wax uh, finishes um, go check out Brad's Etsy store I will leave a link in the description as well as a discount code to save you 10% on that stuff and um, there will be a code in the description as well for the Starbond stuff use it all the time for stabilizing punky stuff bar conclusions and crack film and all the wonderful stuff you find in these pieces um and i also just want to make mention to go check out the duca heritage store site over at dukaheritage.com you can find uh some of the tooling uh face plates as well as the centering plugs and some other pieces kind of like this uh this one will probably be posted shortly and eh, I try and keep it updated as regularly as possible. So go check it out. I think that's about it for now. I love you guys. And I'll see you on the next one. Okay, so I'm taking some over there.